I do. Hi, afternoon. How are you doing? Not too bad yourself. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly Friday. What more can I say? <laughs> well, exactly. Right, Sally. Are you holding up on your own? Uh, just about, yeah. Yeah, just about. Um, we're off to um, Paris for the weekend. So it's kind of finished today. Get packed. Um, early flight tomorrow morning. So it's kind of just... The to-do list is getting longer, not shorter. <laughs> Ooh, la, la, very nice. Are you going into mm. Charles de Gaulle as well? Yeah. Mm. Very posh, very nice. Mm, not too bad. I'll just give it a minute or two, just wait for a few more people to, to join. No problem. Hi. Mm Yeah, we've just got a few more joining there. So uh, I think yeah, we've got 27 online at the moment. We'll no doubt be a few more uh, <clears throat> jumping on. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, let's make a start. Uh, so yeah, thanks for uh, for joining us uh, today for this being our uh, 11th uh, meetup uh, of We Are Tech. Uh, today we've got uh, Dave Westgarth, um, who will be uh, leading on uh, the theme of retros and how to theme them. Uh, I'll hand over to, to Dave momentarily to um, introduce himself. Um, the, uh, the plan for today is as it normally is, um, you know, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, um, you know, do put them in the chat. Uh, Dave might be able to pick them up and uh, answer them as we go. If not, we'll pick them up uh, at, the, at the end of the session. Um, if you do need to drop off for whatever reason, the session uh, is being recorded 
it will be available uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, I think if there's anything else which Martin normally covers off, uh, as you can tell, Martin normally uh, is, is, is compared. Uh, I'm stepping in and uh, struggling with technology. Do bear with. Uh, so yeah, Dave's, uh, Dave's talk, uh, 30 minutes or so, um, opportunity to ask uh, questions and then we'll uh, just share um, the uh, topic and speaker for, uh, for, the, for the next event. Um, over to you, Dave, if you're, uh, if you're ready. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Uh, and thanks very much, everyone, for, for joining on your lunch break. I know most people would rather be stuff in the face, getting the dinner in, but thank you very much for joining us for a bit of a chat. Um, John, I'll just share my screen if that's okay. Yeah, I yeah. I have some slides do. to shoot against. Just let me know when that's coming through, please. Yeah. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, great. So good to see some familiar names on here. I know I've spoken to a lot of you before, even worked with quite a few of you before, so nice to see you all again. Um, as John's touched on, I'm going to go over theme and retrospective meetings, sort of the, the case for doing it, the ways to do it, and some examples and ideas for inspiration in your sessions. If at any point you've got any questions, please ping in the chat, shout out, um, and there will be a quick interactive element. Um, I know we're going to be tight on time, so I'll try my best to keep it punchy. But again, if uh, if there's any questions, my LinkedIn's on there. I'll share my email address. Anyone who's got any questions or wants to get in touch, please do. Happy to, happy to have a chat and get into the detail if we need to. So topics we want to cover is just on the why, the rationale behind why, why I think it's a good idea to, to theme these sessions and why I do what I do. Um, some tips and inspiration, places to look, ideas to go at, uh, and then a bit of an ask me anything at the end if we do have time. So I suppose the first question most people ask is why put the effort in and why theme these records to try and make them more engaging. Um, to keep it short, keeping things fresh is priority number one. It's dead easy to slip into autopilot in these meetings. You get the same outputs, the same discussion points time after time. Um, putting these themes and these sort of spins on the meetings gives a, a bit of an avenue to get out of that autopilot and apathy. It keeps people connected and invested in the session. Um, and it gives people who are working in the delivery space and even people who sometimes take the scrum master delivery person responsibility in these sessions a bit of a a bit of a chance to bring out the creative side and inject a bit of their, their personality and fun into the work. Um, it also helps to address a lot of what we've lost by going fully virtual now. Um, I know there's a lot of pros to going virtual, but some of the things we we'll lose in these type of sessions are things like body language. I can't see if people are nodding, I can't see if people are wandering off on their phone if they're answering Slack things in the background. Um, there's a much richer context when we're all there in person. We can really engage. There's eye contact. There's, side, there's sort of side of desk chats going on. You can inject a bit of a bit of your personality, a bit more, a few more laughs, a bit more conversation points than you can doing it virtually. Um, generally, we see a high level of engagement in person. And as I've touched on there, things like expressions, active listening, giving you the nods and the hers, um, just makes it a bit more productive and engaging in person and this type of thing helps to address some of those sort of, some of those sort of themes that we lose. Um, also, in my experience, when I've seen people start to go off the rails in Scrum, um, typically the retrospective is the first thing that goes. Um, it's the first thing when we start to cut corners, this is the first thing that we, we, we sort of think we can probably do without a retro or this sprint, let's just press on with the delivery work. Um, as I've touched on, it's easy to sit in the autopilot in these sessions, especially if you've got recurring problems that you know aren't going to be solved across the course of one sprint. It's easy just to put those tickets on there, then sort of dial out for the rest of the session. Retrospectives typically outside of your team are not going to be a big priority for wider business. But in my opinion, this session is probably the one at your team level is going to have the highest intrinsic value to your team. 
it's where you can identify the most sort of contextually relevant process improvements. And as a delivery person, project manager, scrum master type person, it's really where you get a feel for your own team, their personality, and where your capability sits. So really useful session, but unfortunately, typically the first one that gets put onto the backlog. Engagement's a big theme for me in these sessions, especially virtually. Um, using the same style, especially like a Jira backlog, that as soon as it hits your face, you just think bored. Using these type of styles can really help keep people engaged, give them something a bit different to look at, something a bit different to get their teeth into. Familiarity also breeds complacency. So it, in my view, when we're using these similar styles of a Jira rep or every week or so, it's, it's dead easy to sort of gloss over those sessions and not really look for the process improvements that you want to make or not identify the highest quality blockers. And when running these retrospectives, the point is to look to ways to inspect and adapt quality and the methods of delivery. If we're not doing that, we really are sort of beating ourselves by not getting as much value as we can out of these sessions. Also, elements of fun. Um, I do believe there are elements of work that can be fun. There's definitely elements that aren't, but we can inject some fun into there and put that bit more of a human element into your work. I think, especially since going virtually, when I first started running these sessions, I found it more of an interrogation with the team. I was sort of having to have a bit of more robotic conversation as opposed to when I'm in person, I'm quite an outgoing person. Uh, I like to have sort of the side of desk chats and get to know people at the human level. Um, and this really serves as a launching pad for that type of conversation and some further benefits that can spring from that. Um, building empathy with your team. Um, and people connect, this is an exercise some of you may have heard of, um, basically sort of a pick and mix of icebreaker activities and let your colleagues get to know each other outside of that work focus. Build some connections and really uncover what the common interests are. Um, what the hobbies are and what your teams are passionate about really lets them get into that human level discussion. Um, I'm a big fan of being more creative in the sessions um, and asking questions differently often for me results in different answers. Um, I'm sure you've all been on stand-ups where it's completely autopilot, absolutely no thought going into it. What did I do today? What did I do yesterday? And what blockers have I got? When, when I'm asking those questions, I tend to leave a lot hanging in the air for the team. So instead of saying, um, what blockers have you got? I would say something like, what would be the number one way that the team could help you today? What can I do for you to make your job easier today? What unplanned works come in that we weren't expecting that we now need to take into account? Just trying to sort of shake them out of that autopilot, wake them up from that sleepwalk and, and get us away from that complacency and monotony of regular sessions. Yeah. Um, psychological safety is a big theme in the delivery and agile space at the minute um, and it's really about giving your team that sort of safety net and security to bring the most valuable topics to these sessions especially in the retrospective we're looking at oftentimes organizational norms organizational structures that we'd really like to change and get our teeth into by promoting the psychological safety element, you're much more likely to get your team to bring those to the table and have a, a more productive discussion around what we can change and what we can do to address those concerns. Sort of an, an anecdotal point on this for me is I found by moving to more sort of gamified and conversational dynamics and by giving team members either a character to play, a role to embody, or a, sort of taking them a step away from themselves, they're much more likely to play that character and they're, they're much more likely to feel that element of psychological safety and bring things to the table that they might not do if it was a more conventional session where it's just, I'm the boss, you're the worker, what's, what's the problem? It sort of removes that dynamic and puts, the, puts different conversational and relationship dynamics in play that increase the levels of trust and openness in the sessions. Um, and this is probably number one for me as a delivery person, strengthening the relationships within the team. Um, I don't think trust is built by doing the work. I, I truly believe trust and openness is built by those side of desk conversations and having that more human connection with people. These type of sessions open up that avenue for you and your teams. It gives you more of an avenue for the water cooler side of desk talks, gets the discussion away from just focusing on work and Importantly for me, it allows these relationships to grow more organically. I don't need to be there to oversee the team and force them to talk to each other. This really helps facilitate them 
having those sort of side avenues going off on tangents and discussing things in a more wholesale fashion. Um, this is just a quick point on selecting themes um, and a couple of criticisms I've seen of this. Um, I, I think everyone likes immersing themselves in a different experience for a while, whether that's video games, movies, music, watching sport, wh whatever we like to do, there's always sort of that time that we like to switch off and get out of, get out of the real world and get into a bit of a fantasy. Um, one criticism I've often seen is, do these always have to be nerdy? Um, a lot in the agile space is around sort of that Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, sort of nerdy type fandoms. The, the main reason I started this was because the teams I was part of weren't really that, but we were all massive sports heads. So I moved straight into the sort of the sports theme and I've done all sorts around football, boxing, UFC, NBA. There, there really is no limit to what sort of slant or spin you want to put on these sessions. Um, and one thing I'll often sort of recommend or ask delivery people to do is go to your team and ask them what they're into and just create a list and then start working your way through that. Um, also rotating the responsibility around your team is something I found really helpful. Um, and as a delivery type person, it's really helpful for me to have someone else to lean on to do the facilitation and I can be more of an active participant in those sessions if I've got sort of themes or topics that I want to cover as well. So really helpful for us. But I think I've talked you to death for enough now. So let's move over to a Miro board quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ping in the chat a link to a board that I've put together. If I can find it. This is where technical difficulties are going to get the better of us, I think. Here we go. Okay, there's a link to the board in the chat now. If you guys just want to click on that, it should bring you through to here, which is a quick board I've put together just for us all to work on. Anyone who can't get on there or can't access the link, please let me know. Okay, great. I can see people are starting to filter through, which is really good. Um, and what I'd encourage you all to do is just in this section here, I've put to the left a theme suggestions. Just take a ticket and let's create a quick list of possible themes that you guys would want to run a retro session around. So anything that you're interested in, any hobbies you've got, anything that you're particularly passionate about, just take one of the tickets here and write your theme on. Also, if you can't access the board, feel free to ping in the chat, shout out, and I'll at describe and we'll be able to quickly go through them. Does that work for everybody? We've got volleyball, really good one, sports theme, like it. Anything else from anyone? As I say, feel free to shout out, ping in the chat, whatever you want to do. Manga, really popular one. Lots of uh, lots of the agile people seem to be into manga, so good one. Boxing, can't say fairer than that. Thank you very much, Scott. Esports. I'm not an expert on esports, but happy to give it a try. Newcastle United, please don't push your luck. Art, NFL, travel. Okay. So, got a handful there now. True crime. That's an interesting one. I often feel like killing some of my team members, so really good one. Okay. Um, okay, cool. I can see music as well. Let me pull that over. Music, another really popular one. Uh, I've seen all sorts of those. Elvis, Jack Jones, Rod Stewart, all sorts. Um, so stage shows, brilliant. Um, so quickly, what I would ask you all to do, I've put a lot of dots on the side here. Just please feel free to pull a couple of these over and just drop a dot on one that you'd like to vote for. So, for example, if I want to vote for music, I would just pull a dot over like this. Um, please feel free to move them across and we'll have a quick dot forth and then we'll quickly put one of those together. I can see someone's put one on Newcastle by mistake, so I'll just move that one back. Okay, it looks like music 
is a clear winner for about 10,000 dots. Brilliant. Okay. So what we'll do super, super quickly and try and keep this punchy, let's throw together a music retrospective template. This will just be four prompts. Uh, very quick and snappy. I'll try and keep it as short and sweet as I can. Normally what I would have is sort of a skeleton for prompts that we can use, which would be an image, a title and some questions and a centerpiece that we can build around. So I hope everyone can see the template I've thrown together just to the right. Um, so if we were thinking music, are there any images that spring to mind, any themes that people want to look at? Do we think, um, what sort of questions would people build around a musical theme or would you use a particular band? And um, so, for example, for me, we could have sort of around themes in music, classical, rock and roll, um, all that good stuff, or we could have a particular band and use their song titles and um, stage shows they've done. Um, what I would suggest is, why don't we start by people just pulling in any images that they want to build around, any, any sort of questions or titles that they want to use, please feel free just to copy and paste in whatever we like. If you've got a particular band that you want us to use, paste them as a centerpiece and we can build around that. Um, bit of a free for all for everyone. So please just fire away as and when you're ready. So I'll, um, I'll try and ad-lib this a bit because I know we're getting tight on time. So for example, for music, let's take, who can we take? Who's big? Uh, why don't we take Queen? So this is one I've done before. Um, Queen Elizabeth, let's go for Queen the Band. So I'll just narrow the focus down a little bit just so we've got something to shoot at. So if I copy that in, what could we build into this? Oh, brilliant. Someone's brought in. Who is that? I don't know who that group is. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. I was going to say, if I, if I listen to something cool, it's, it's right. going to be Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've blown us right out of the water. Ariana Grande, I think. Unless I'm a million miles off, that's another good one. Okay, so Alison, I'll put you on the spot. What's your favourite Bon Jovi song? Bed of Roses. Bed of Roses. Good one. So, Bed of Roses, if we're going to build around that, we could say, how can we make life more comfortable for the team? Uh, what can we do to improve, improve conditions in the team? How, what are we doing when we feel super comfortable? Um, is there anything that jerks us out of our Bed of Roses? Um, Anyone who's put Ariana Grande in there, have we got a sort of theme or song around her? Anything that we would use for that? I'm not an Ariana Grande expert, if that's who that is, sorry. Come on, Ono Poosper in there. <laughs> I don't know any Ariana Grande songs. No, me neither. I'm not sure who this is either. Does anyone want to comment on this one or give us a give us a hint? John Lee Hooker. That's well out of my comfort zone. What's your favourite song by him? Oh, probably Boom, Boom, Boom. Burn, Burn, Burn. Really good one. So if I was thinking Burn, 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 I'd be thinking what's on fire in the team? What impediments or blockers have we got in our way? What can we do to put fires out and make our lives easier? Um, pop slash ballad, we could say, what, what are the popular sort of tools and technology that we use in the team? What are the popular, I don't know, what else we could have? What are the popular themes on our VS code? What are our popular plugins? 
we can think about what connects us all as a team. So what are the popular values and principles in the team? Do we like solid? Do we like TDD? Um, so sorry, I am getting pressed for time, but I hope you can see how I'll sort of link back scrum values, best practices, team dynamics to these themes um, and try and build a bit of a centerpiece around them. Um, just because we are running out of time, I would love to just continue on with these, to be honest. But just because I am running out of time, I'll try and get us closer to the finish line. Some additional items that I'll tend to build into these are once we've got a rep robot that we've built, we'll do some kind of icebreaker activity or people connector. Um, and that really helps get the conversation flowing at the start. Um, I've also used health checks like the Spotify health check model. And these are really useful for tracking over time. So you can see how your team's performance is changing and improving as time goes on through your sprints. Dot for what we've done at the start, really helpful for making your sessions more democratic and giving people a bit more engagement in the session and bringing them along. Uh, and the final one for me is rating the rep row. Um, as a delivery person slash scrum master, that's really important for me, just so I can get a feel for what type of sessions the team enjoy. Um, and really what we're going to do to keep getting the most value uh, and the most efficient use of time out of these sessions for me and the team. I'll just jump back quickly to the deck for the last two minutes. So um, I'd really encourage you to all go out and give this a try. Um, and especially for delivery type people, you'd be surprised how much engagement, how much extra value you get out of this. One thing I've seen a lot of people do is remix and tried and tested formats. So this was originally an um, I like, I wish, I wonder rep raw. Um, and I've put a Bruno Mars spin on that. Uh, and that went down very well with the team. We had a couple of girls in the team who loved Bruno Mars and this was a great hit for them. Um, if you do need any inspiration or you want to have some templates that you can just lift and shift, Miroverse, Mural and Bordle.io, great resources, Tons of templates set up and ready to go. Not just retrospectives and agile, all sorts of things around timeline, value stream mapping, um, project plans, all sorts of good stuff on there for you to get your teeth into and have a look at what's available. Um, and as I say, really encourage you to have a go and run an experiment in true agile fashion, give it a trial, measure what happens and adjust your approach. Um, the sort of big take home for me or the big fundamental thing is the purpose of the rep was to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. I wholeheartedly believe this is one string to your bow or one arrow in your quiver that you can use to do that. Um, and I think you'll surprise yourself with the results if you do take this forward and give it a go. Um, and I think, yes, that's brought me right to the end of my session. I think I'm just about on time, but John, please jump in if not. Um, but happy for you guys to ask me anything or... If, if we need to draw to a close, John, please let me know. But if we've got time for questions, let's go for it. I got one, Dave. Hi, Isaac. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I was wondering who actually chooses the themes for these retros, like the way that you do it. Is it something you do, or is it like at the end of the retro, would you ask your team to um, put forward themes, or how would you normally do it? Or would you do it in the same way that we've just done it? You can do it any way you want, yeah. I mean, normally, if I'm with a new team, I would do, run this sort of session first and get a backlog of themes that we can work our way through. If it's a team that's been together for a long time and I know that they love football, we might just go through every team in the league. Um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, that, of sort of passing that down to the team because at the end of the day, they are the most important people in the session. That's where I'm going to get the those quality and effectiveness improvements from. So I'm keen for them to shape how these sessions look. Makes sense. Brilliant. Thanks, Dave. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Stunned you all in the silence. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you very much for that, everyone. Um, Really great to speak to you. I've put links to my LinkedIn and email there. If you do have any questions or want to reach out or have a chat, please feel free to get in touch. Happy to talk. Rep rows, agile, delivery, technology to the end of time. So thank you very much for your time, everyone. Uh, and John, I think I'll just pass back to you. I think I'm about out of time. Excellent. Thank you. Um...
Let me just get uh, the final slide up. Um, so yeah, thanks again, uh, Dave. Uh, let me just run through our slides. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the, the next uh, planned uh, meetup that we have is Wednesday the 9th, so just a couple of weeks time uh, where we've got uh, <coughs> Steve Waterman uh, speaking uh, around two-way database syncs. Um, so uh, the, the event is live on the meetup page, uh, do register your uh, interest on that. Uh, and as Martin has said uh, previously, if you've got uh, any ideas uh, around uh, topics, themes, um, for us to try and find a speaker, or indeed if it's something that you're uh, interested in speaking about yourself, do get in touch with uh, with Martin Walker. Um, if there is nothing else, um, we can end it there. So um, you can have a little bit of lunch before you start your uh, afternoons work. Uh, thank you very much uh, again to Dave uh, for taking the time to uh, join us today. And um, we'll, uh, catch you all again soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Cheers, Dave. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.